And we are live, and check it out, guys. I have a new t-shirt that is completely invisible on the green screen. Look at this. I am a floating head. Check it out. I am a floating head. Yeah, you can see the Sounders logo. Miles Jack got released. I did see that, yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. Let me uh, sound the alarm here. I think the Steelers signed a Landon Roberts as well, who was actually on my list, although it was really low. I have seen the Carter News, Nugash. I just don't really know what to think about it. Because <clears throat> honestly, like it doesn't change the fact that there's a red flag there. Okay, yeah, a Landon Roberts comes off the board. That, I think everybody else on my board is still there. And let's switch over here real quick. Connor McGovern, Greg Gaines, Ioannidis, Bobby Wagner, Denzel Perryman, Donta Foreman, Ben Jones, Ode Ibushi, Tri Turner, Andrew Billings, Ashawn Robinson. To my knowledge, all those guys are... Still available. So not a whole lot has changed. I know that James Robinson got signed. I know Alexander Madison got signed. But uh, it's been pretty quiet so far. I am a floating head. I like the Devin Bush visit. I want Devin Bush. Should be super cheap, too. Expect the Steelers might sign Bud Dupree. Let me update the big board, guys. Packers want first round pick plus to trade Aaron Rodgers. So how is everybody this morning?
Packers are going to get bailed out by the stupid Jets. Hey, Kelly, what's up? Lonnie Johnson visiting the Seahawks. I don't know a ton about Lonnie Johnson. Sean Murphy Bunting's a free agent. Yeah, it does. I don't know why Baker deserves any more than like $2 million. Showtime XKP, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the sub. We could trade Fant, but I don't think we're going to do it until the draft. Hey, Herman. Y2K. This time he goes down. It is Walter who gets Bo Mart Saul, thank you for the 999. Hey Brendan, thanks again for what you do. I'm working today, but it's nice knowing I can come check the tracker every now and then. Hopefully we see something happen today. Take care, go Hawks. No problem, Devo. Thank you for your support. It's always appreciated. Remember, guys, I need extra donos today because I need to buy a body. As you can see, I am just a floating head. Having a full body in this day and age is very expensive. How many viewers do I get on Twitch usually? It kind of depends on the game. Like when I was playing Zelda, I was pulling like 30, 25 to 30. But for most games, it's usually around like anywhere from 10 to 20. It just depends on the game, depends on the time. Last night I was playing It Takes Two and I was like around 15. Still not huge numbers or anything, but it's a start. No, I've never reached out to the Seahawks to get a job there. No. So, when, um... Can Jalen Carter now not be charged with anything further concerning the incident? Like, it's done? Like, like he, he's officially put a cork in it, so there's no way he gets jail time or anything else? I did not hear any kind of Seahawks news other than the visits. Two years, 15 million for Bobby. I think that's okay. Mark Sanchez, thank you for the $2 super chat. Brendan, are you getting Road to the Show 23? No, because Julio's not on the cover. If Julio was on the cover, I would have gotten it. All right, pretentious Cameron, good luck with that. This is not my full-time job, no. No, I, this could not be my full-time job. I'm nowhere near there yet. I'm just taking the week off from work. Because it's a big week. Yeah, no, I'm not on the Seahawks payroll at all. <laughs> yeah, I already pre-ordered Tears of the Kingdom. I pre-ordered Tears of the Kingdom. I'm going to get it day one and play it immediately. Oh, that's cool, Y2K. Linebacker 54, I think that's too much for Bobby. If he wants that, 
I'll go get somebody else. I've been to the VMAC. I work for a company, Herman. One bold prediction for the day. One bold prediction for the day. Let me see here. I'm going to say we signed Greg Gaines. I'm going to say we signed Greg Gaines. Yeah, Y2K. I mean, it's a good game, but by the end, I was really ready for it to be done. The game kind of wore itself out for me. The story, I just didn't like that much. No, I don't think Wagner is too expensive for us. I think we know that the ball is in our court and we're not going to overpay. Okay, here are the best players still available, guys. On my tier list, these are the best players still left. Yeah, I saw the Julio catch. Should I I don't know where Miles Jack would be because there have been some years where he's just been complete trash, but there have been some years where he's been good. I don't know, but obviously he's not there yet because he just got released. I would probably consider him a capable starter and put him somewhere in tier four. Enzo Perriman's visiting with the Texans, but he hasn't signed anywhere yet. He could sign Trey Turner. Ben Jones was the guy on the Titans. He got cut. But he had a good year last year. He's just old. He's going to be like 34. No, I think we could get Drew Tranquil. I think there's actually a decent chance of that. I think he's certainly on the radar. Oh yeah, Addison's definitely going to be available at 20. I just don't want him at 20 anymore. He tested like shit. I like Tyree Wilson a lot. I don't know if I would spend the fifth pick on him. I'd want to trade down a little bit probably. At Walera, we still need much better depth. If we got Greg Gaines, that would help, for sure. But we would still need much better depth. I think Bush would be super cheap. Just a few couple million bucks. He was not good in Pittsburgh. Hey, Millie Mills. Hey, Timothy. No, free agency kind of goes on forever. Free agency never really ends when you think about it. Yeah, rise up is Falcons. Hey, Crabtree.
I haven't scouted Cedric Tillman yet, but he is on my list. There's still plenty of linebackers left. Wagner, Perryman, <clears throat> Deion Jones, Corey Littleton, Quan Alexander, Drew Tranquil. Uh, let's see who. I still have Devin Bush, Jayon Brown, probably some other guys like Miles Jack now. No, I don't think that's bad Seahawks fan 12. Yeah, I don't think Reed has much left in the tank anymore, but I want to see the contract. It might only be like two and a half million cap hit. If it's two and a half million cap hit, then it doesn't really matter that much. He'll be adequate depth. Well, Jim Campbell, maybe, <clears throat> maybe he'll just, uh, maybe he'll rediscover himself. Maybe he needs a fresh start. Sometimes players just need fresh starts. Really, mask? Yeah. YouTube doesn't do notice sometimes. Oatmeal's okay. I don't think Littleton has much left, but he would be okay. We don't need a long-term solution because we're definitely drafting a linebacker. Seahawks fan 12? I don't think so. I think that would be a reasonable deal. Bolts are looking into Gardner Minshew. Oh, I'm cold. I don't... Well... Well, no, wait. Hot breakfast? Oh, yeah, of course, that's way better. But mask, isn't he going to be expensive? Like, that's going to take pretty much all of our cap space. I like Julian Love, too, but, like, how do we make this work? I, I, I have a hard time figuring out that part of it unless we're going to do the post June 1st on Jamal Adams, and I think it's too late for that.
Yeah, we'd probably have to restructure Lockett and cut out Woods. I think Julian Love would play nickel corner here. Ortigan, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the sub. I did not have Braxton Berrios on my list. Taker610, thank you for the $2. Was 12 mil a year? Was 12 mil really all Jamal Williams was worth? Well, a lot of his touchdowns were short yardage, I guess. And running backs right now are just not really getting paid any money. So, sure. Like Jamal Williams, I would have signed him for that cost probably, but running backs don't get paid these days. You think Bush is better than Barton? Not based off the way he played last year, but he certainly has much higher upside. No, I don't go to games. It's been a while since I've been to a game. It's just not that fun. It's a pain. Wow, so Braxton Berrios is trying to play for every team in the AFC East, I guess. Do you guys still want Jalen Carter? I kind of don't. I don't. Too much crap. Too much crap around Jalen Carter. you bring in Fournette for vet men? For vet men, sure, but there's no way he's only going to want vet men. If he only wants vet men, that's a miracle. I don't like Fournette that much, but for vet men, yeah. Over, don't worry about it. You don't have to buy a ticket for me. It's it's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I would do that Seahawks fan 12. Devin Bush, two years, 4.5 million. Sure. Well, we need a power back Y2K. Ken Walker isn't very good in short yardage. We need a short yardage back. Miles Jack is really athletic. I don't know if he's actually good. No, I didn't play football growing up. I played basketball. Oh, I'm sure we are still trying to get Bobby. It wouldn't shock me if maybe we just weren't willing to go up to his asking price.
floating head syndrome. Michael, uh, well, I think what's happening, Michael, probably we're thinking about love as like a nickel corner on top of his safety stuff. That's the only thing I can figure. <clears throat> and maybe we're planning on cutting both safeties next year, Jamal and Diggs. So we want to think about replacement. Oh, I love God of War GL. I played all of them. I played all the God of War games. They're great. I don't really want Kareem Hunt voodoo. I think we can do about as good for less money. Not a big fan of Kareem Hunt. Uh, Dwayne McBride, I haven't looked a ton at yet, Matt Glo Glover, but um, I am familiar with him. He's on my list. The running backs that I really like so far are basically Roshan Johnson, Zach Charbonnet, and uh, Evan Hull. Oh, I think that would be great, Seahawks fan 12. Three years, 16 million for Greg Gaines. That sounds good to me. I thought the Mariners offseason was good, but we didn't catch up to the Astros. The Evans dude is nice, yeah. Uh, Chase, what's his name? No, wait. Evans. I'm I'm sorry. Who are you talking about? Yeah, Carter's not going to be there at 20, guys, unless he does three other stupid things now, between now and the draft. <clears throat> Zach Evans? Oh, okay. I'm st I'm, I've been doing mocks. I post a mock every couple weeks on my channel. Oh, I've definitely seen Hooker. I'm sure we're going to do something today. I just don't know how big a deal it's going to be. I don't think Carter gets out of the top 10 as of right now. I'm going to be honest, though. I think, uh, I think John Schneider is out on him. I think John Schneider would be out on him. Mark Sanchez, thank you for the five bucks. Hey, Brendan, what do you think about the Hawks double dipping at the DL in the draft, getting Cansey, Brizzy, or Mozzie Smith? I would totally do that, Mark. In fact, we probably should. We don't have depth on the defensive line at all right now. We go very, we are very, very shallow. But in order to do that, we probably need to do something at linebacker and free agency just so we have bodies. Slept okay last night. But if the Seahawks don't do something soon, I'm probably going to get tired again. I want Roshan in the fourth. He's like Chris Carson without the health concerns. We need a Chris Carson. We need a power back.
I hate it when my football follows on Twitter tweet about non-football stuff. No, Captain Rex, not at all. Bush should be super cheap. Bush is, as of right now, a massive first-round bust. You're getting him for potential. You're not getting him for production. No need to draft a running back before the sixth. Well, right now, I think we need two running backs. Like, we only have two. We probably need two more. So don't be surprised if we spend a decently high pick on at least one. Would you be content if the Seahawks don't sign another free agent? Oh, not, not at all. Right now, we are pigeonholed in the draft. Oh, really, Sean Hines? Oh, yeah, Draymond Jones is definitely going to be the biggest move we make this offseason. He's making $17 million a year. That's the biggest free agent signing in maybe Seahawks franchise history, right? Have we ever signed a free agent and given him a contract worth more than $17 million a year? I don't think so. Like, even if you scale for the cap, that's the biggest free agent signing since probably, like, Julian Peterson. Yeah, I did see that, Dennis. I really like Joey Porter, but I think he's going to go too high for us to pick. <clears throat> yeah, but Gino wasn't a free agent. He was somebody who was already in the building. I'm saying signing like an outside free agent to more than 17 mil a year. So the Steelers are are losing Miles Jack and Devin Bush in the same offseason. So they're definitely taking linebacker in the draft. Percy Harvin was a trade. I don't know very much about Lonnie Johnson RSF. I'm not uh, I'm not sure drop top. Uh, are you talking about Trenton Brown? Is there a chance the Steelers steal Bobby from us? I guess they usually don't do things like that though it feels like. Uh, I don't have one, Chrissy. I don't watch college basketball, but Alabama. Atlanta has made an offer to Darius Slayton. Clayton, the receiver. <clears throat> uh, Dylan, we don't ever really trade up in the first. I doubt that's going to happen. I think we're going to sit where we are and be okay with it, especially after the combine. Like, you could get a guy like a Nolan Smith at 20, probably, and that's fine. Yeah, I don't know what to think of Miles Jack. He's had some years where he's been really good, and he's had some years where he hasn't. Really inconsistent. I don't know what to think of him.
Who did Lonnie Johnson even play for last year? Houston? Yeah. I'm not familiar with his work. Bijan won't be there at 20, and I don't think JSN's the pick, no. No, oh, Eugenio, I couldn't make that work. I can't finish at six. Not most days. Yeah, we're doing the Hawks Nest stream tonight. Nolan Smith at 20 makes sense. I would do that. Yeah, come on, guys. Let's get some linebackers in here. Let's go. We don't have a long snapper right now. Schmidt's had a good pro day. He's just not very athletic. I think you can get a more athletic center in the third round. Ryan Kelly from Indy? I don't know. A lot of people are saying he's washed up. He didn't have a good year last year. I think he's gone by 37. Munch on Lynch. Lunch. Oh, I don't think so, Luke. Players get over that stuff real easy. Taker610, thank you for the $2. Do you like Schmitz at 20 or word? He's not there. I don't like Schmitz at 20 anymore. There was a time when I would have done Schmitz at 20. But he did not have a good combine. He's not a very good athlete. I would take him in the second, but I think I'd rather have Tipman or Whippler in the third. No, I did not see what Tony Pauline said about Seattle and Schmitz. Julian Love can play nickel corner. That's why I think we're interested in him. Pauline said we really like Schmitz. That's interesting because, don't get me wrong, Schmitz is the best center in this draft, but I would think we want, would want somebody more mobile, somebody more athletic because of our offense. I do think Schmitz is the best center in this draft, but I wouldn't take him in the first anymore. if I want him in the first anymore, man. I mean, look, everything the Seahawks said before the draft last year ended up being a complete smokescreen, so I wouldn't take anything too seriously from the team this year. I think Schmitz is better in, like, a power gap scheme. Ozzy and Schmitz in the second round would work. 
I like Whipler and Tipman in the third the best right now, but Schmitz at 51 would be fine. Oluwatimi in the fourth would be fine. There are other good options. Plenty of good options um, in the draft, but we should be doing stuff in free agency to hedge. I really like Trenton Simpson, so I probably would, but a lot of people wouldn't, I know. Yeah, I saw that, Derek Youngburner. I would do Ben Jones all day as a hedge, but you would still have to draft a good center. I would not want Ben Jones to be, like, locked in at starter. Not at his age. Why would the Jags trade Josh Allen when they're trying to go for it this year and compete for, you know, maybe the Super Bowl? Ben Jones failed a physical with who? Oh, I would do that instantly, Seahawks fan 12. Two years, 5.5 million? That's nothing. That's l significantly less than what Jaron Reed, Jaron, or Jaron Reed signed for. Yeah, but 5.5 .5 million for two years is nothing. He doesn't even need to play that well. Okay, let's see here. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut a video on the Jalen Carter thing because it's what everybody's asking about right now. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day four of Free Agency Frenzy Week. We are still just getting underway over here on the stream. Been going for a little less than an hour now, and so far not a whole lot has happened around the league. Um, there has been a little bit of activity, but nothing with the Seahawks yet. And basically, we're just talking about the stuff that could happen. We're talking about the stuff that we hope happens. Um, just waiting for something to actually go down. We've got a few visits, but really, I think the main topic of discussion concerns one Jalen Carter because his situation continues to change. And yes, by the way, if you guys didn't notice, I am literally a talking head now. I am a floating head. I'm like Rayman. Do you guys remember Rayman? He's got like, you know, the, the, uh, hands, but I, I look, I look like Rayman now almost, man. It's pretty cool. But anyway... 
uh, yeah, I have a green shirt now that completely disappears on the green screen, and I like it. It's pretty cool. But anyway, so there was some Jalen Carter news uh, this morning, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about it in this video because that's the stuff that Seahawks fans are really thinking about right now, and it's definitely pertinent, right? Um, I think that right now... Uh, Jalen Carter is probably the most polarizing topic for Seahawks fans, whether or not you want to spend the number five pick on him, whether or not you want to hope he falls to 20, whether or not you want to trade down a little bit and get him, whatever. Uh, Jalen Carter is the go-to topic right now for Seahawks fans. His legal issues, as of his current legal issues, I'll put it that way, are now basically behind him. He has entered a deal with the Athens Clark County solicitors per his lawyer. He has pled no contest and according to his lawyer, he did not flee the scene. He was the one who called 911 and what he was doing did not lead to the death of his teammate. So, it's not as bad as it could have been. It's still not really good, but it's definitely not as bad as it could have been. So, he's going to do 12 months probation, pay a thousand dollar fine, perform 80 hours community service and finish a driving course, no jail time, and the situation is closed beyond that element of it, um, beyond those elements of it rather. So I don't think there's any real chance that this gets brought up again and he suddenly has to serve some jail time. I don't think that's a real consideration here. So hey, if your concern about Jalen Carter was, oh, he might get arrested and put in prison after we draft him, doesn't seem like that's a very realistic possibility right now. Um, so at the very least, he's past that. Now, I'm going to continue to say what I've been saying. It's not just one thing with this guy. It's not just the fact that he might have gone to jail for a year, and now he's not. Um, even if you assume that there's no way that Roger Goodell can suspend him for a while... Like, you, assuming for a second that Roger Goodell cannot do that because he was not in the NFL at the time, which I, I don't know about that, then you're taking a look at this situation and you're going, okay, so we don't have to worry about him missing time because of jail time or a suspension. He still made a very questionable decision, but he was only 21 when it happened. Okay, I get that. He did something dumb. But it wasn't completely heinous. It wasn't a capital offense. But then you have the stuff that's actually on the field as well. Like his horrendous pro day where he showed up 10 pounds heavier than he was uh, expected. And then he looked god-awful doing the drills. Now again, you could look at that in isolation and say, hey, it's just one day. It's his pro day. Who cares? But then you have some of the other concerns, concerns that I've mostly ignored, like his conditioning, the fact that he can only play a couple snaps in a row before he gets winded. So, I'm still sitting there thinking to myself, man, this is the number five overall pick. I'm okay with a red flag, maybe, I'm okay with the occasional red flag with a top five pick. Like, nobody's ever going to be the perfect prospect, but I think it's just a little too much with this guy. I think it's just a little too much. I'm still kind of out on him at five. But what I can say is that the legal situation has largely largely cleared up. He's not going to go to prison. He's not going to... I don't think he's going to get suspended either. So at the very least, we can say that if you draft him, he should be available to play from week one on. Yeah! Now, there are still a lot of red flags here. Jacob McManus, welcome to the channel. Still a lot of issues here. Still a little too much for me to feel comfortable doing, but at the very least, things have gotten better today. So let me know what you think down below, guys. This is maybe the most controversial Seahawks topic right now, to Jalen Carter or not to Jalen Carter. All right, see you guys later. Hopefully the Seahawks actually do something, but that is the top news of this morning. Jalen Carter getting past his legal problems. See you guys later on. All right, I needed to cut a video on something, and that's the stuff that everyone cares about right now. Everyone wants to talk about Mr. Carter. And is your Adderley retired? Wow.
All right, let's see here. I guess he made a few million bucks and tapped out. I don't know very much about that good sports. What's that's good sports? Who aren't they a Broncos fan? He's a Broncos fan, right? <clears throat> yeah, he's the Broncos guy, I think. Okay, it's Perna. Okay, yeah, I know who he is. Oh, Paris Campbell went to the Giants? I kind of like Paris Campbell. He was one of my top remaining receivers. Damn. guys he wasn't on the list yet but paris campbell is popping off we still have about 50 players on the tier list and there are a couple that are not on the tier list that would be good too that i just haven't added yet okay yeah i know who brandon perna is he is good Floating head with the Game of Thrones meme is the $99 dono. <laughs> what if I made that the audio clip? Uh, David, I can only show the top of it. It's too big for me to show the whole thing. Like, I can show this much of it. It hasn't changed today. Uh, I can read it off after what's on screen. After what's on screen, I have Akeem Hicks, Deion Jones, Corey Littleton, Quan Alexander, Jadavion Clowney, Troy Hill, Marquise Goodwin, Justin Pugh, Elijah Wilkinson, John Feliciano, Derek Neandi, John Jenkins, Chris Wormley, Dean Lowry, Drew Tranquil, Melvin Ingram, Justin Houston, Sean Murphy Bunting, Mason Rudolph, Cooper Rush, Dearness Johnson, Zeke Elliott, Zach Pascal, Keelan Cole, Eek Bodiger, Max Garcia, David Edwards, Scott Kessenberry, Will Clapp, Max Garcia, Greg Van Roten, Justin Ellis, Linval Joseph, Naquan Jones, Kerry Heider, Devin Bush, Jayon Brown, Lorenzo Carter, Nathan Peterman, Jonathan Hankins. Hello, Tommy. That one's kind of interesting, right? I think he's good. I mean, he's been really consistent. Over the last several years. Hasn't really gotten hurt very much. David Moore's out of the league, guys. We can do better than David Moore. David Moore is just a warm body right now. We can definitely do better than David Moore. Once David Moore left Seattle, he was he basically did nothing, so
BP, that's a dangerous way of looking at things. Like, what if the centers aren't there when your pick comes up? What if you end up not taking a center? Or do you force yourself to take a center before you're ready to make sure that doesn't happen, and then you're reaching? Oh, yeah, 100%. I would love Carrie Hyder. Hey, Ethan's Tech World, what's up? I think the odds of that are okay, David. Maybe we go get DeForest Buckner. Ugh. I mean, look, once you sign Draymond Jones, you're kind of committing to going pretty deep here. Hyder was not terrible for us, and he's not going to be expensive. Cole Holcomb signed three years, $18 million with the Steelers. What position does he play? I don't have him on my list. I don't know very much about him. Even though it was a f yesterday he signed, I'll go ahead and throw him up on the list, though. Oh, the linebacker. Okay. I don't know why he wasn't on my radar, but he wasn't. Maybe he should have been. I don't know. So, Pittsburgh signed Holcomb and Roberts, so they're not going to get Wagner. I don't know if they were ever going to, but they're definitely not going to now. They gave multi-year deals to Holcomb and Roberts and could draft somebody. CJ Gardner Johnson is not happy about something on Twitter. I don't know what. Maybe Philly Lowball. Yeah, I don't know who else would want Wagner at this point, really. Who's in on that? Maybe the Chargers and that's it? Like, the Chargers might be in on him, but that's it. Some people are saying, like, the Broncos, but they brought back uh, Singleton. And Singleton played really well for them last year. Uh, Dakota Andrews sounds like a workout warrior to me. Remember, pro days are famously unreliable in terms of, like, numbers. Like, the stuff that's really useful for a pro day is, like, when you actually see it. 
like when you see what Jalen Carter did yesterday. And he's actually like basically throwing up all over himself. Uh, Fumi, the Cowboys signed uh, Van Der Esch back, so they're probably out on Bobby. Well, the fact that if there's no other team interested in Bobby, maybe it's just like we can afford to wait for his asking price to go down. It's a, uh, what do they call it? The uh, seller uh, buyer's market. <clears throat> All right, guys, we've got almost 400 people in the stream, so I'm going to go ahead and do my deal. Thank you, everybody, for coming out today to spend some of your day with me. It is day four of free agency. Waiting for stuff to happen. Not a heck of a lot's gone on yet. We're about an hour in. And so far, things have just been really quiet. Seahawks haven't done anything yet. But I think today, we're going to see something. Maybe nothing huge. But I do think we're going to see something at some point. And I'll be here to cover whatever happens. So... To all of you out there in the chat, if you want to support, there are several ways you can do so. The easiest way is to click the like button. We have 69 likes on the stream right now and about 400 people in here. If you click the like button, it really helps uh, with uh, exposure. It helps with the algorithm. So if you have not done so, please do so. And we also, you can also become a subscriber if you are new to the channel and you want to see the uh, daily uploads. That is similarly free to do. And um, if you become a sub, you'll be able to see the daily uploads as they come out. I upload multiple videos pretty much every day about Seahawks stuff. We're going to start Mariner stuff soon. Um, we have a sub goal. We are a little less than 500 short. We're going to try to reach it by the end of the month. Seems within reach. Uh, and if you want to go above and beyond that, there are a few different ways you can do that. The first is to become a channel member. We have already hit our channel member goal for the mar month of March with 126 members as of right now, but you can still become a member or you can gift members. It costs $2 or $5 a month to become a member depending on what level of member you want to be. You gain access to perks such as shout outs at the start of videos and in video descriptions, access to the emojis in comments and stream chat, and also access to the badges, the custom channel badges, depending on how long you've been a member. You click the join button down below. You can also directly donate via super chat or tips. If you want a super chat, click the dollar sign in chat. If you want to tip, click the link in the top of the near the top of the uh, stream description. Or you can do exclamation point tip in the chat and the link will pop up. Those are the best ways to support. There are a couple different ways in the description, like Cash App, Direct PayPal link, and um, Venmo, but those are the main ways. Uh, we don't really have any dono goals. We just, I get what I get and I'm happy with it. So there's no particular, like, you know, prerogative to, like, get to this particular number. It's just a tracker to see how the day is going. And, uh, yeah, that is about it. It. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me today. Uh, Doug, I have never dra I never did drag racing when I was a kid. I can tell you that right now. Maybe I did stupid stuff, but nothing like that. Lazy, thank you for the dollar ninety nine. Love the day streams. I just drive box truck listening. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad. That sounds fun. Paris Campbell got a one-year deal, apparently. I'll throw that up on the board. I like Paris Campbell. Interesting talent. Had a decent year last year. burned a garage down. I never did anything like that. I can tell you that with full confidence. 
I mean, look, if it was just the legal issues, I could probably get over that. But then it's the legal issues and everything else. It's the legal issues and the bad pro day. It's the legal issues, bad pro day, and the on-the-field conditioning concerns, which, again, any one of those things in isolation I wouldn't really care about. I would love Darnell Washington, 20 to 37. Barry Soitoro, thank you for the $20 tip. Wow, that is the biggest tip that we've received the whole week, I think. And he says, Bobby and Miles Jack running around together sounds fun. Yeah, that's kind of the appeal of it, right? Like, the appeal of it is that you might have, uh, how should I put this? A very talented player like Devin Bush learning something really useful. From an experience playing alongside Bobby. By the way, let me get the uh, top super chats up on the board as well as the top tip. Mark Sanchez, thank you for the $10 super chat. Brendan, name two... Hold on one second, guys. Name two fictional characters you would want on the Hawks roster. Minor Shane Falco, quarterback, the replacements. And Samurai Johnston, MLB from Unnecessary Roughness. Uh, oh, that's easy. The quarterback would be Willie Beeman. The best fictional quarterback ever is definitely Willie Beeman. Uh, so that would be my quarterback for sure. Um, best other than that. I mean, probably Waterboy in terms of, like, result. Obviously, the Waterboy is more of a meme, whereas any given Sunday is actually trying to be a real football. A movie, where uh, whereas something like the Waterboy is more of a joke movie, but probably him in terms of, like, actual effect and result. Horse Gump at running back. I mean, he's just a pure speedster, right? Wasn't he a kick returner? He, he returned kicks, I think, because he was just, like, really fast. <clears throat> Uncle Rico QB, that one's not bad either. He has that ugly sidearm delivery. Didn't Bundy score four touchdowns in one game? Barry Soitoro. Thank you for the tip again, by the way. Okay, guys, I got to refill my water, so I'll be back in a few minutes. Everyone chill out for a bit. 
hang out, and I will be back soon, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we are back. Deox OG, thank you for the nine ninety nine. 
For Downtime Project, what is all-time Seahawks wasted pick team? The highest Seahawks draft pick at each position who contributed the least to the Seahawks. And quarterback's probably Kelly Sto uh, Rick Meyer, right? Is it Rick Meyer or Kelly Stouffer? Or Dan McGuire? It's got to be Rick Meyer, right? That's the number two overall pick. Running back, is it Kristen Michael? No, Jordan, I think the DUI's been flushed. Receiver would be like Corn Robinson. Tight end would be like uh, Bosworth. No, I'm sorry. I said I meant linebacker. Tight end. I mean, Jeremy Stevens had some good years, but maybe him. Linebackers Aaron Curry and Brian Bosworth. David, that's an interesting one. I've thought about that before. You would never have to punt, right? You would always be guaranteed points on every drive. Maybe Kelly Jennings would be up there. He never really did much. I think we could get Zeke cheap. I don't know what Zeke's going to ask for. He's a big name, but he's not very good anymore. Harrison Smith resigned. Oh, Harrison Smith was never a free agent. Harrison Smith was always with the Vikings. He just restructured. One year, three million for Campbell. I might have been willing to do that. Brent Taylor resigned with the Bengals. Oh, he's a punt returner. Okay. Well, James Carpenter started for a team that won the Super Bowl, though. Definitely not him. Can't be him, man. He's a valuable part of the greatest team in Seahawks history.
Taylor Mays got drafted by the 49ers, right? Yeah, I saw that, Tariq. Yeah, Slay's not on the market, guys. Slay is not on the market. I'm sure that's part of it, Tariq. But you have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to be okay with what Jalen Carter's been up to. It's possible, but it's still a lot. Randall Cobb's going to the Jets. In Eaglear, he still did something pretty dumb. I don't think anybody is wrong for holding it against, holding that against him. Now, I'm personally, you know, trying to be a little more balanced about it. But anybody who wants to hold, you know, what Jalen Carter did against him, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <clears throat> Tariq Island, thank you for the four ninety nine. Pete Carroll did say you're either competing or not. Carter wasn't competing at his pro day. Do you think that Pete looks at that and says no on him? I mean, it might not be Pete's call. It might be John's call. And John seems to be very focused on character issues right now. So that kind of makes me feel like John's going to look at Carter and be like, um, there's too much going on. I kind of suspect that's what's going to happen at this point, but I don't know, man. There's, look, there's a lot of inform. I will say this. There is a lot of information around this that we do not know, that we cannot know that somebody like um, John Schneider will know because he has access to that information. So... I'm sure he's going to look into it and make a better educated guess than I can. Marcus B28, thank you for the $5. Anyone that uses Excel more than me deserves a tip. Keep up the good work, sir. Yeah, I mean, thank God for Google Sheets because I'm not giving Microsoft $100 for Excel for real Excel. Thank God for Google Sheets. Chances of QB go 1, 2, 3, 4... 
The odds have gone down because of the Garoppolo contract, but I still think it has a decent chance of happening, like 30 35%. I mean, Tyler Ott, isn't he going to be vet min all day? Should be really easy to bring him back, unless you're bringing back Carson Tinker instead. Yeah, I think Levis gets overhated. I still like Levis a lot. But right now, I just don't think it makes a lot of sense for us. Deox have not done anything yet today, guys. Still waiting. Levis's comp is a little bit of Carson Wentz, a little bit of Josh Allen. Yeah, when I see Levis, I see a little bit of Josh Allen and a little bit of Carson Wentz. I don't think uh I don't think we're going to keep Abram at this point. No man, the Carter thing is really confusing. The Carter thing is really, really confusing. So many layers to it. As Stetson, he doesn't have a big arm. Not a good athlete. If Reed is cooked and terrible, then yeah, I probably would have kept, rather kept Shelby. But I feel like there was a third option there that was probably better. But here's the thing, the cap hit for Reed is probably going to be like two and a half to three million. He only has to be decent depth to be worth that. I get that. If we had not brought back Gino, I would have happily taken Levis at five. AR I would have been nervous about. I wouldn't have hated it, but I would have been nervous about it. You know who Stetson Bennett reminds me of? Stetson Bennett reminds me of Ken Dorsey. No, I think we might draft Edge early, Jay Cameron, if Edge is best available.
Draymond Jones can play a lot of different positions, apparently. I imagine if Will Anderson is there at five, we take him. Maybe then we trade Daryl Taylor. Zeke? I don't know. I'm open to it, but it's got to be real cheap, man. He was not very good last year. It's on Brown to the Bengals? Not really. <clears throat> I'll make another mock draft in the near future. Yeah. Drew Locke better than Baker Mayfield? I feel like he is, but Tampa paid uh, Baker like they planned to play him. I'd love the Seahawks to sign Devin Bush. Yeah, I don't even know if Bennett gets drafted. I don't understand the appeal there. We're locked to the Jets. That would be funny. It is day two, technically, IPAC. It's day two of free agency, but it's day four of the free agency frenzy week. Do I still want Jalen Carter at five? I'm still kind of saying no, but I'm not completely against it at this point. At the very least, he's not going to go to jail for a year. I mean, Jerji, you're going to have to put him on a team where, like, every single player, every single one of his teammates is a superstar. Like, that's what he's used to, have, being surrounded by superstars. Oh, okay, IPAC, I hear you.
Well, Georgie, when when Stetson Bennett is playing at Georgia, he is surrounded by future NFL players, and he spends like 90% of his time playing against a bunch of people who are going to be insurance salesmen. In the NFL, he'll be surrounded by NFL players playing against other NFL players. Yes, there is a difference. Life is not going to be easy mode in NFL the way it was for him in the pros. Look at Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey was surrounded <clears throat> um, Look at Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey was surrounded by hyper elite players in college and he never did anything in the pros. Brody R Wishard, thank you for the membership. Welcome to the Elite Channel membership group. That gets us to 127, which is a new all-time high for the channel. 127 is a new all-time high. I think Bennett gets drafted, but he gets drafted in like the 6th or 7th round, if I had to guess. Edwin Diaz has torn his patillar tendon. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is heartbreaking, man. Jonathan, thank you for the $2 super chat. Prepare for the future and take a QB while you can. Well, remember, next year's QB class is probably going to be really good. Don't rule that out. Hey, Derek. Uh, next year's um, QB class is going to be pretty, probably a little better than this one even. So you could wait until next year, no problem. You're going to have Drake May. You're going to have Caleb Williams. You're going to have Quinn Ewers, Michael Penix, Cam Ward. Uh, KJ Jefferson, uh, probably a couple guys that I'm not even really thinking of right now. Even a guy like Spencer Rattler. Yeah, but it's been years since the ACL tear, Tariq. Maybe he just needed until now. Maybe it just took him a few years to get back. How much for you to sing the BK ads? Um, $10 or more and I'll sing one of the BK ads. I just need to find the script for them, I guess. Uh, around Hendon Hooker for the West Coast offense depth. I'm more third round with Hendon Hooker, but I do like him. If somebody donates $10 and asks me to do the uh, Burger King ad song, I'll do it. But there are like three of them, right? I could do all three. Yeah, Campbell to the Giants. <clears throat> yeah, I want I, I want uh Greg Gaines. That one makes a lot of sense to me. He's been good for the Rams mostly. Greg Gaines wasn't very good last year, 
but he was on the Rams. I did not do a March Madness bracket. The first video I ever posted on YouTube, I can't remember. Tariq Island, thank you for the four ninety nine. Can you sing BK, have it your way, you rule? Okay, fine, I'll do it. Okay, uh, let's see here. Whopper, 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 Junior, Double, Triple, Whopper, Flame Grill Taste with Perfect Toppers, I Rule This Day, Lettuce, Mayo, Pickle, Ketchup, It's Okay If I Don't Want That, Impossible, or Bacon Whopper, Any Whopper My Way, at, wait, no wait, these lyrics are wrong, and then Any Whopper My Way, at BK, have it your way. You rule. Okay, there we go. I actually hate Burger King. I think Burger King's gross. To me, it's like the second worst fast food place. Oh yeah, okay, we're playing the Titanic song for the slow day. I need to get something. By the way, there's plenty of crappy food that I like. Like, I like McDonald's. I eat at McDonald's sometimes, and I think it's good. Um, I'll eat Wendy's. It's good. Um, I think those places are fine, but BK, no. I don't like Taco Bell. Taco Bell's the worst. Taco Bell is the nut low. Never had in and out. Yeah, I like Arby's too. I like Arby's. I like Carl's Juniors. I like Chick fil A. Chick fil A. Holy's okay. I'm not crazy about it. Very fillery. Taco time's good. Panda Express is alright, but you can taste all the... Like, I don't know. It's just something about it just puts you to sleep. Almost 11 o'clock. Never had Culver's. Jack in the Box is eh. It's okay. I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. It's just eh. Oh, man. Not much else going on yet. Still plenty of desirable players, man. Wendy's is good. I like Wendy's. Five Guys is the GOAT. Man, Five Guys is incredible. DQ's food is meh, but they have good desserts, so it's worth it. <sighs> Never had White Castle. Jimmy John's is good. No, I'm not having a calzone today. I'm just going to go make a sandwich in like half an hour or something. 
Honestly, when I go out and buy food, I don't really care that much about price. I just want to buy things that I like eating. Like if I'm going out for food, I know that under I, you know, just kind of understand. Oh, the Paris Campbell deal is a lot bigger than we thought. It's actually like 4.7 mil with escalators. Like when I go out to eat, I'm not really thinking about penny pinching. I just want to get stuff that I like, stuff that I think tastes good. When I want to save money, I eat at home. If I want to save money, I make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm not going to go out to a restaurant and then be like, oh, I don't want to buy this because it's too expensive. Derek, what are you Derek, what are you talking about? Cowboys CJ Goodwin? Oh, special teamer. Yeah, Derek, knock that shit off, please. Red Robin's great. I don't know what you're talking about. Red Robin is great. That's not even fast food though. That's a sit down restaurant. Red Robins don't have uh, fast food. Derek, stop reposting everything you see from every account that has like 13 followers. Eh, KFC's okay. Never had Pancheros. I mean, Austin Sauce, that's definitely a possibility, but... Man, it's just a lot of mental gymnastics you have to do with this dude right now. Firehouse subs is good, yeah. Or had Cbex. What pizza do I like the most? Right now, there's actually a smaller place. I'm not really. I'm not going to say what it is. If I say it, people will figure out where I live. But I've been having them a lot lately. They're good. I haven't had Olive Garden in like 20 years. I watch the games at home pretty much always. Marconi's is nice, yeah. I don't have them that often, though. Tyree Wilson at five would be okay. I think you could trade down a little bit and get him, but I do like Tyree Wilson a lot. So I would certainly be okay with it. Okay, I'm starting to lose my tolerance for people posting fake, obvious fake news. Not dealing with that. The Chiefs aren't going to sign Odell. They know better.
I agree in the air. But I think he's good enough to excel wherever. I've never worked in a fast food place. I do not have all 22. My understanding is that it doesn't even work well. So I'm not going to spend money on something that doesn't work. I spend money on PFF, but at least, like, PFF always loads. Thirty-three. PFF coverage stats are all right. I usually use PFR, but it's good to cross-reference them and see if there are any big differences. Ravens reach a deal with Geno Stone. That's a cool name. Uh, Music Kingdom, I would like Devin Bush. Miles Jack, I don't know Miles Jack. I don't know about Miles Jack. Top three all-time Seahawks. Largent. Cortez. No, I'm going to say Largent, Walter Jones, Bobby Wagner. Yeah, I know, Nugash. That was some crazy football compared to what we have now. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Cortez was never on any great Seahawks teams. Not his fault, but it's harder to put him up there when he was never part of a great Seahawks team. Would Dalton Risner fit our scheme? Well, I don't think Risner's that good, personally. Ofa kept getting hurt. Still nothing. I think Marshawn should be in the Hall of Fame. And I think Sean Alexander should be as well. If they're going to put Edger and James in the Hall of Fame, you got to start letting people like that in too. Alexander won an MVP. Game on the line, who am I giving the ball to? Oh, Alexander all day. Easily Alexander. He turned into, like, the greatest running back of all time near the goal line. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Lynch was low-key not that good in short yardage situations for some reason.
Yeah, Lynch was secretly not a good short yardage back. Bears GM Ryan Pohl says he'll bring Georgia DL Jalen Carter in for a visit. Let's see. Still nothing new. Come on, people. Let's get a move on. Our team is definitely not the fastest it's ever been. It's fast at the receiver spots and maybe tight end, but overall it's not that fast. It's fast at the skill positions. That's about it. <clears throat> Byron Young's interesting. He didn't have a very good combine, but I do like some stuff about him. I'm going to scout him more in the near future. Lynch wasn't super fast, particularly by the time we got him. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Derek, that's what it says. Well, definitely Monet, but I don't know if we can release Monet, but... We need to release both. Al Woods is old, man. 
Let him go retire. Let him do something else with his life. He's going to go out there, get hurt in week two, and we're never going to see him again. He's going to get like a stub toe, and then we're never going to see him again. Miles Sanders went to Carolina. Yeah, that was yesterday. <clears throat> Nothing yet, guys. Nothing yet. Whopper. God. Somebody actually clipped it and put it in the memes channel. Uh, what am I streaming today on Twitch? I'm probably doing It Takes Two. Do you, Chiefs Kingdom? Yeah, that's the thing. As players get older, they pretty quickly lose their... Uh, they pretty quickly lose their top end speed. It's definitely important to keep in mind here. Yes, Jesus Kingdom. Taker, thank you for the $2. Carter is like Brandon Miller's situation at Alabama. Which one was Brandon Miller? I'm not sure I remember that one. Michael, the Bengals are not going to be able to draft mix, and they're not going to have a high enough pick for it. Ashen Varghese, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the sub. Tony Joe, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the sub. Gabriel Martog Martoglia, welcome to the channel. No, Wagner is not signed yet. Thank you, Chiefs Kingdom. Bengals need like a guard or something. Lemon pepper wings or buffalo. I'm not a big fan of wings. They're a pain in the butt to eat. I like just tenders with no bone. You just eat it. You don't have to worry about like, you know, pain in the butt.
I mean, tenders are better than nuggets, but yeah. I just don't like dealing with the bone. It's obnoxious. I'm going to go make a sandwich in a minute here. I got DoorDash yesterday. I'm not doing it today. I don't know, Tariq. The longer they wait, the worse it's going to be, though. I normally go and pick up the food, but sometimes I can't. Right? Like, right now I'm streaming. If I were to go pick up food right now, I'd be gone for, what, at least half an hour? In the middle of the day, I would prefer not to. Phoenix, probably top three. You can easily argue top one, by the way. It's a lot easier than you think. Chiefs Kingdom, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the sub. Yeah, Ethan. But there was a reason for that. I was trying to speak it into existence. I was trying to will a Seahawks move into existence. There was a purpose for that. Juan Alexander would be okay. Definitely not very ambitious, but would be good enough. Remember, whoever we sign as a linebacker in free agency is not likely to be a long-term solution. It's just going to be a guy to hang around for a year or two while rookie X is getting his bearings in the NFL. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Bo Nix is going to be another rookie QB in the draft next year. And I'm not a big fan of him, but I know some people like him. David, wouldn't he get hurt because he's so skinny? 
Uh, Matt, I don't think I would be, but we'll see where I am when the draft starts. I put a fleece on, so no more floating head. Later, I'll take it off, and we'll get back to floating head. I like DTR a lot, actually. So here's my question. Does Lamar Jackson not know how to read or does he just not understand NFL contracts because he doesn't have an agent? Apparently, he literally turned down a contract because he didn't understand it. If he knew what the contract really was, he would have definitely jumped on it. Alright. Um, still nothing new. Still everything chill. Uh, Michael, that was just the guarantees. It was much bigger than that. Like, it was like six years, 290 million. All right, guys, I'm going to go make a sandwich. I'm going to go make a sandwich. When I get back, maybe we'll do something. So I'll see you guys in a little bit here.
Okay, we are back. How is everything? Okay. I love clowny. Always been a clowny guy. I'm not seeing anything particularly of note. Nothing new. Broncos had plenty of money. That's not true at all. That's disingenuous. Broncos had plenty of money. Okay, no problem, Tommy. Broncos hate us. For now, they do.
Rams losing everybody. No, Titans cut Dupree. He's probably going to the Tennessee Titans. I don't really want Dupree that much. It would be okay, but it wouldn't, like, get me out of my chair. Yeah, C.J. Goodwin went to the Cowboys. Hey, Gary. No real movement on the board. Still the same board from yesterday evening. At least at the top. Still the same board. Should I do my taxes while I'm streaming? David, thank you for the dollar ninety nine. Anything food recommendations in Issaquah? I basically have spent so little time in my life in Issaquah, I could not answer that. Hired somebody to do my taxes, but I still have to get information together. Yeah, I saw CJ Godwin. But it's such an insignificant move, I'm not even going to put it on the ticker. Yeah, good one still available.
I think he might. Goodwin might take close to Vet Min. Do you get any work done while you stream? No, I'm not working today. I might do some taxes. But, I don't know. Veteran defensive tackle Ty McGill is going back to the Niners. Hey, Matt. Yeah, I'd like to bring good Goodwin back. Jihad Ward. I remember him. Yeah, I saw that, Jake. I want Greg Gaines. He's one of my top targets at this point. Yeah, Bush and Bobby makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I love the idea of Trenton Simpson and Bobby Wagner addicted. Right now, I kind of want to trade down from five. Uh, Will Anderson or Tyree Wilson, I guess. Yeah, Broncos getting C.J. Gardner could happen. They still have a little bit of money. Although, are they going to trade their receivers or something? They need to sign some new receivers if they're going to trade the current ones. Graham Glasgow to Detroit.
we're getting a little bit of action in. Nothing Seahawks related, but starting to see some stuff. I guess Tyler Ott, Ian, but pretty indifferent. <laughs> Yes, Rohan B. I do not have staff to do this stuff for me. All right, come on. Come on, Seahawks. Let's get something going here. I don't have any birds. Why do you guys think I have birds? Where'd that come from? I think so. Hey, Joe, okay, what's up? Eating an assortment of things. Yeah, we have no defensive line depth, really. That's kind of what I'm hung up on. It's not that different from where it was before free agency started. It's like it's my, minorly different. Yeah, Kalias Campbell's nice. One year, three million.
My sugar glider is asleep right now. I'm not going to get him up. He's sleeping. Put him on stream before. Oh yeah, I'm definitely doing a live stream for the draft. It's going to be a little more active than this one, because right now, ain't crap happening. Nick Westbrook, two years up to $8 million. I noticed him in free agency, but I didn't really look into him. Is he a wide receiver, Nick Westbrook? Yeah, okay, I thought so. I remember Dee Dee Westbrook. He was a guy I always kind of liked. Also a receiver. Somebody just wrote an article on Seattle Times that basically says the Seahawks will either be good or not good in 2023, depending on whether or not they do well in the draft and if their players stay healthy. Gee, I hope this person didn't get paid to write this article. Jesus. Why can't I get a job doing stuff like that? I'll tip $10 if you get the sugar glider on stream. I'll wait for him to wake up. If I notice him, if I notice he's awake, I'll get him. I don't want to wake him up though. He's really grouchy when I do that. Get the sugar glider later, guys, when he's awake. No. Oh, no, yes, Detroit signed Graham Glasgow. I guess he's a guard. Did you get them at Petco? No. <clears throat> uh, I'd say under, Sam. He's not an edge rusher. <clears throat> Hold on, let me check something here real quick. Okay, I'll just go here when I pull out the sugar glider later. Sugar gliders are not definitely not diabetic. Are there any first round tackles that could fit as a guard? Some people think Skoronsky will be. But he'll probably go too high. How's it been since the friend passed away? Pretty fine, honestly. Near as I can tell. He, the one that is still alive, was always the more antisocial one anyway, I think. 
So I don't think that's the end of the world. Still waiting. At what point do I leave for, do I go take a nap to try to motivate the Seahawks to make a move? What do you guys think? Oh, that's a significant one, guys. Andrew Billings. I liked Andrew Billings. He was definitely on the list. Andrew Billings going to the Chicago Bears. That's a tragedy. Damn. Andrew Billings. 3.5 million. That's nothing. I would have done that instantly. Okay, that bumps Akeem Hicks into onto the screen. He's a nose tackle. <clears throat> Bears have the most cap space by far. I use Razor. use a razor I always use razor products for mouse and keyboard Martin will probably be better at Washington than he was here. That defensive line and being in a 4-3, that's pretty good. So, Barton will probably improve significantly. 
McGovern is still available, yes. Hold on, let me go check on him real quick, guys. Oh. Yep. He's asleep. That's pretty cool. I've never built a keyboard. I'm going to be streaming till around 5. Uh, SBZ, I looked into it. It seems like he's a little better against the run than I originally gave him credit for. I will say that. I don't... I don't know. I don't hate it anymore. I, I just... My main issue is just it's unambitious. Larry Bird, welcome to Basic Membership. Appreciate the support. Welcome back. I believe you've been a member before, Larry. Is the glider nocturnal? Yeah, they're nocturnal. I'll do Colin at some point, yeah. Yeah, sugar gliders are nocturnal. So if I want to get them up, I think the... Uh, actually, one thing I could do is turn all my lights off. That'll probably get them to get up pretty soon. Does the guy creep up your night? Most of the time, no. It's pretty rare. I mean, sugar gliders are honestly pretty simple. They get up, they eat, they run around in the cage, they like to stay where it's warm. Like, if I opened up the door on his cage and just left it open, he probably wouldn't leave very much. Because he wants to stay where it's warm. Devin Bush has way more potential than Barton, but the way he's played lately, he's not any better. Um, but he was probably coming back from the major injury. Does it ever fly onto your head? I mean, you know, some sometimes they climb around on me and stuff. And so, all right, here's what I'll do. I'll pouch him. I'll I'll pouch him. Does he pee on you? Oh yeah, a lot. A lot, actually. I'll pouch him. Maybe that's the best way to handle this. Be right back, guys. Matt Glover, welcome to Basic Membership. Welcome to the team. Thank you for the support, Mr. Glover.
found them. Oh. Okay, I went to go pouch my sugar glider, and we have made a signing. Evan Brown. That's not somebody I had on my radar. Let's uh, take a look here. Oh, former Detroit Lion. Oh, I know that name. I didn't know he was available. Let me take a look here, guys. Evan Brown, bigger center for sure. He's started 12 games in each of the last two years for the Lions. Last year, he played mostly at right guard. The previous year, he played entirely at center, but his grades were decent. Seems like he's better at center, but that's a little hard to judge. <clears throat> okay. So, we'll see what the money is hopefully, in a second here. But it seems to me that he's going to be general backup guard depth, backup interior line depth. Yeah, so Evan Brown started mostly at guard last year and center the year before. PFF grade is decent. Not great, but pretty good. Oh, it sounds like, a, oh, Casey Brown. That makes him sound like another Austin Blythe. Hopefully he'll be a little better than Austin Blythe, though. He is only 26. Blythe was 30-whatever. Okay. I'd like to see what the money is before I cut the video. I did see that, Ethan, yeah. Alright, I'm just waiting for some information about the money. Yeah, so maybe he competes with Phil Haynes to start. Maybe he starts at center. Maybe he competes with Rookie X at center. Well, he's He's got a lot of potential hats he can wear here, so that's pretty cool. That Detroit offensive line last year was pretty OP.
Oh yeah, we need two centers for sure. Like we only have one right now. All right. <clears throat> All right, screw it. Everybody ready? All right, here we go. All right, people. The Seahawks have made a move. Mark the date and time in your calendars. The Seahawks have made a move, their first move in terms of an acquisition in a couple of days now. And it's not somebody I necessarily had on my radar, not somebody that I was following really closely, but after having a quick look at it, it seems pretty pretty good to me. We need to know the money, we need to know the contract, we need to know exactly what's going on here, but for the moment, what we can say is the Seahawks have signed interior offensive lineman Evan Brown. Evan Brown is a Seattle Seahawk. So to briefly talk about Evan Brown, the player, he's started 24 games over the last two seasons for the Detroit Lions. He started 12 games last year as a right guard mostly. And then the year before, he started 12 games entirely playing center. So this is a versatile player who has proven he can play pretty well as a right guard and probably even a little bit better at center. So the question becomes now, how are we going to utilize him? Is he going to be a starting center? Is he going to be competing with Rookie X for the starting center job? Is he going to be competing with Phil Haynes for the starting right guard spot? Is he just going to be general depth? We don't know. Um, obviously, when we see the contract, we'll probably be able to get some idea here. But I think this definitely alleviates the extreme pressure we had at the center position. Um, this guy has a pretty good track record of pass protection, especially at the center spot. Um, he's a bigger guy. He's like 320 pounds. So while I do think that there are some reports out there that he's not a great run blocker, that's something he could get better at. It's not going to be like Austin Blythe just giving up a big size advantage to every nose tackle. So... We need to know exactly what the plan is here, but the signing seems pretty good to me based off the information that we have. So I'm interested to see what the money is, of course, but there are many different ways we could go here. He can start, he can compete for a starting job, he can play center, he can play right guard, and he can do both of those things at least fairly well. This is not a Kyle Fuller situation where, yeah, he can do multiple things, but he's not really good at any of it. No, he's actually pretty good at it based off what he did in Detroit. Now, in Detroit, he had some awesome players next to him. Guys like Taylor Decker and uh, Sewell. So hopefully in Seattle, he ends up getting teammates like that as well. Because uh, obviously we have high hopes for our tackle tandem, but they're not there yet. So, Seahawks sign center slash guard Evan Brown a guy who has built a good amount of experience in Detroit these last couple years. He's only 26, by the way, can get better. And pending the money, it sounds like a really nice pickup to me. All right, Evan Brown, welcome to Seattle. Let's see what comes next. Apparently, he's a better center than a guard. It is a one-year deal. One-year deal, people. One-year deal. So, probably a hedge for a rookie.
apparently he got overpowered a lot when he played guard, but he's much more natural at center. So hopefully he ends up playing center for us, which as of right now, that's probably what he would do. Really half daddy. Well, I wonder what we gave him. <clears throat> I love Tipman and Whippler. They've really grown on me lately. Right, guys, we made a move. Two point three, two point three million. Okay, guys. Okay, that is pretty good, man. I'm pretty happy about that. Two point three million for a capable interior offensive lineman who can start. I like it. Uh, I would take Zeke for very, very cheap. I don't think he has much left, but he has a little bit left. Well, okay, maybe the 2.3 number is inaccurate. I'm just going to throw it up on the board for now. But we'll see if it ends up changing. <clears throat> Eugenio, I really liked Zach Wilson. Oh, by the way, I think somebody became a member while I was away from the keyboard, Mark Glover. No, wait a minute. No, I did shout him out. I remember now. Okay. All right. Looks like the financials haven't been revealed yet. Okay, that was just what he was making last year. Yeah, Spotrack thought he was going to get like eight figures. Like he's a credible center. Matt Glover, I usually just use a few Twitter accounts. Okay, guys. Oh, Jonathan, thank you for the $2. Hawks have to do something about linebacker. Yeah, they kind of have to, unless they're just going to commit themselves to drafting like three linebackers. And even then, that's not very good. Because then you're going to have to trust rookies completely. Okay, guys. You guys ready for the sugar glider? You guys ready for the sugar glider? Okay, hold on one second. Uh, a sick. Uh, uh. Oi. It's okay. Good boy. Here we go. I need to trim his nails. His nails have gotten too long.
what kind of animal is it? It's actually more closely related to a kangaroo than anything. Okay. Yes, they're nocturnal. They're closely, they're most closely related to uh, kangaroos. They have pouches. That's why I pouch them. It reminds them of when they were babies. So you put them in this pouch and then you hang it around their neck, your neck, and it, you're just like basically a kangaroo. What's it? Oh, it definitely knows me. I've had it for eight years. They live, they can live up to like 15 years. They typically don't live that long, but they can. Like, see, I'm going to put him under my fleece, and he's going to like that. It keeps him warm. Name? He is Zeus. The female who is now dead is Hera. No, I don't like to teach my pets tricks. I don't really... I'm not a tricks person. I just want them to behave. You hang on him all day? Uh, not all day. Do you get something like that? I got it from the Puyallup Fair years ago. All right. Okay, there we go. Has it taught you anything? I mean, there's responsibility there. I do have to feed him every day. Hey, Evan Brown, what's up? Welcome aboard, Evan. They can get up to like 15 years old. They usually don't get that high. My female died a little bit young, but she lived like eight years, I think. Yeah, I cut a video on Evan Brown. I mean, given the fact that we signed him, we're probably looking at him as a center. But he was good as a center a couple years ago, yeah. <laughs> kind of Sean Hines. They look like squirrels, but they're closely, more closely related to... Uh, uh, like I said, kangaroos. The thing is, they're really skittish because they're on the bottom of the food chain, basically. Like, when they're in the wild, I think they're mostly in, like, Australia. And I think a little bit in, like, Indonesia, if I recall correctly. Um, generally speaking, they... Everything eats them. So any other animal in the universe they're terrified of because everything eats them so they're kind of just scared of everything and it takes a while to really bond with them But, um, I mean, I've been feeding him for eight years, so he's gotten relatively used to me. No, I've had him on stream before. Do you feed him? I have this specialized sugar glider feed with um, fruit. I don't feed him any grubs, no. That makes them smell bad. Chrissy, I think the best option would be Whippler or Titman in the third. There's this special glider food I eat, feed him. And then there's also fruit, and that's mainly it. They, they really like yogurt. That's their favorite, I think. 
Like, I would feed him on camera, but they don't really like to eat when they're out of the cage. Like, when I try to feed them outside the cage, they just... Ignore it, basically. Yeah, he's only 26. I'm interested to see the money here, but it's a one-year deal. So, it's probably just kind of a bridge... Still no details on the money. <clears throat> Apparently the Chargers were looking at signing Evan Brown as well. The issue with the one-year deal is you can't backload it. Like, when you do a two-year deal, you can backload it. But if the deal is small enough, it doesn't matter. It seems like this guy's better at center than right guard anyway, so we shouldn't be messing around with that. Will Waith, FAs I would be mad about if the Hawks signed him. I mean, it always just depends on money, right? Like, I would be mad if we gave Zeke $5 million, but I would be fine with it if we gave him, like, a million and a half. Well, addicted, I think we're taking him as a bridge. We do plan on drafting a center. And we just want somebody hanging around who's good enough to start for a year in the event that it takes a while for them to, you know, get up there. Natty Light, thank you for the $2.12. Thanks for all that you do for the 12s, Brendan. No problem, Natty. It's a lot of fun. Viewership spiked when we got, um, oh... Evan Brown. Zeke's not visiting tomorrow. <laughs> All right. The Seahawks actually did something. Let's go. You think we have a chance to get Ngakwe? Eh, I don't really want Ngakwe. He's atrocious against the run. And Nathan, where are you seeing that? Nathan, are you posting fake news? I don't appreciate that. Oh, okay. He's very calm right now because it's warm in there. He's like pressed up next to me. He's like really kind of chilled out. Now he's starting to fall asleep on me. I'll probably put him back in his cage pretty soon. I didn't play the RE4 demo, Will. I'm going to go into the main game blind. I don't need to play the demo. Date on Jalen Carter's situation. Nothing's changed from this morning. 
Do I have any other pets? I got a couple dogs upstairs. Everybody likes JMS. I just, I'm not in love with the fact that um, he's not a great athlete. That has me a little bit concerned. Yeah, his name is Zeus. Aaron, maybe Greg Gaines. I don't let the dogs go near him right now. They're too young. They get too excited. Um, our dogs are too young to even be allowed near the sugar glider. So, here's the question. We signed Evan Brown. Do I pull Connor McGovern and Ben Jones off the list because they're no longer really considerations? I guess it depends on the money we gave Evan Brown, right? I'll wait to see that one. memo because he's extremely talented and he's been trying to battle back from an injury the last few years maybe this is the year he finally battles back from it he's going to be cheap and there's tremendous upside <clears throat> evan brown's a good center tan fam not necessarily madison not necessarily. I wouldn't give Zeke more than like a million and a half. Uh, Jimmy G got like 67 and a half million over three years, I think. Something like that. I don't want Shaq Griffin back now. Updated tier list. Um, McGovern, although I will say the centers are less interesting now. Greg Gaines, Ionitis, Wagner, Perryman, Foreman, Ben Jones, Abushi, Tri Turner, Ashan, Akeem. Uh, 
All right, guys, I'm going to go put him back in the uh, cage. What's the question, Nathan? Oh, the Andrew Voorhees thing? I mean, that's not a bad idea. You're going to stash him for a year anyway. Okay, one last time, guys. He is better than Blythe. Everyone's better than Blythe, though. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, one more time, guys. He doesn't like the bright light, so I'm going to go ahead and put him back. Good boy. Uh. Evan Brown seems like he's a pretty good center, yeah. I actually thought he was going to be too expensive for us. Still no details on the money. Hey, Tommy, what's up? <clears throat> he was much better than Blythe last year, and he was playing out of position last year. So, yes, the answer to both the answer is yes and yes and yes. Everyone was better than Blythe last year, though. But he could end up competing for the starting job with Rookie X, like... That could absolutely happen. Um, so we're not married to him. Corbin Smith was a big Evan Brown guy. I just thought he was going to be too expensive. I remember looking at him now and thinking, ah, he's going to want like eight figures. Do you take him outside? I, I Every now and then. But you, you got to prepare for that because, like, he, he gets cold. A hundred percent I do, Half Daddy. I go after Otani all day.
I'm not going to say what city I live in, guys. Come on. None of your concern. How about that? Yeah, he's a bigger guy. Yeah, that'd be pretty unfair, big country. I'd be pretty happy about that. Up to four million. Okay. So that could be depth easily. I'm not seeing Condota say anything about four million. I'm not seeing that. I'm looking at Twitter right now. I don't see it. Matt, not intentionally, but it's happened once or twice, yeah. It's a one-year deal. Matt, uh, the Evan Brown is a one-year deal. We know that. Some people are saying it's $4 million, but I'm not seeing it on Twitter yet. Seattle Times page. Still not seeing it. I'm going to hold off for the moment. Dallas was definitely better than Homer. Homer kept getting hurt. Dallas stayed healthy, man. Leonardo Maciel, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm not pronouncing that name, but welcome to this st stream as well. Thank you for the sub. Samaj Newton, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the sub. Evan Brown... Started 27 games at center in college, so he is a center. He just played right guard last year. Yeah, Forsyth can't play in the middle. I like it, yeah. SMU, the Mustangs, I think. Oh, 
Probably second behind Jalen Hurts, right? Yeah, I do go Hawks. I get a lot of subs in March and April. Up to 4.5, but most likely 2. If it's actually 2, that's pretty nuts. We still don't have Jaron Reed contract details. That's annoying. I really want to know what that first year cap hit is. Uh, pretty good, Herman. Yes, we have a center. I don't have a Patreon, Eugenio. Uh, I don't know how many people would use it because I don't really have the ability to offer extra stuff to Patreons. <clears throat> like, everything I do, I just put on the channel for everybody to view. Like, I don't want to spend time creating content that only, like, bot paying customers can view. I don't think enough people are going to view it, and it also doesn't help the channel grow that much. So, I don't know. To me making a patreon like i would straight up have to be like you gain no perks for being a patreon it's just a way to give me money like i cannot give you any perks everything i can do i just post publicly on the youtube channel you know i did think about it at one point but then i was like what would i do for patreon perks and i realized nothing I'm going to do merch at some point, David, but I'm not going to need Patreon to do merch. Putting out videos on Spotify? I didn't even know you could do that. You could do polls? I can do that on YouTube too, though. Peter Go Hawks, welcome to the channel. I stream on Twitch too. Actually, this is a good opportunity to let everybody know. Uh, I do stream on Twitch, and tonight I'll be probably streaming on Twitch. Um, after the Hawks Nest stream, it's going to be It Takes Two. If you want to see me and my friends stream It Takes Two together, I just posted the link to my Twitch in chat. Head on over there. Give it a follow, and I may very well see you tonight. And if It Takes Two doesn't do anything for you, tomorrow after the stream, I should be doing some Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm sorry, Horizon Forbidden West. I really want the money details on the damn deal. <clears throat> Neil is not gone. Not right now. Um, I have not done High on Life, but I have Game Pass now, so I could. But I don't know what the point is now. Because the guy who created that game is like a weirdo, right? He's like a sexual weirdo and he's going to jail. And 
now he's not going to get to make a sequel. Neil is not gone, to my knowledge. Yeah, I beat Hogwarts Legacy a couple weeks ago. Really good game. Yep, things slowed down after the Evan Brown signing, but the Evan Brown signing seems pretty juicy. Yeah, USO, it's made by the guy who made Rick and Morty, and he's in, like, trouble now. Yeah, Penny's in a hell, heck, heck, hell of a situation, man. Hell of a situation in Philly. Thank you, Rockman. Trying to get to 500 followers by the end of the month. We're actually not doing too badly. Very much so, Red Ace. I have interest in both. Mostly Devin Bush. I think he'll be really cheap. How old am I? 33. Yeah, I saw that, Austin. I'm already like five plus hours into Forbidden West. Uh, Pyro Griffon, probably Greg Gaines at this point. Come on, let's get some money details. Okay, it's not sexual. Yeah, whatever. He's a weirdo regardless and he's in trouble. Wagner Dream is definitely not dead. Yeah, exactly, Flag Sabbath. That's why I didn't have Evan Brown listed. I thought he was going to be too expensive. And then by the time it became clear that we needed a starting center, he just kind of passed through. I, I must have just missed him. I definitely would have had him there alongside guys like McGovern, I think, if I had looked into it. Maybe it was I was thrown off because last year he was a right guard. I don't know. But knowing what I know now, this seems like a really good signing. Do they bite? They bite a little bit. Uh, I think he's going to be our center, yeah. Tristan Hill. I remember Tristan Hill. He's the guy who tried to kill Chris Carson. The Mabaz, welcome to this channel. Thank you for the sub. Yeah! Neo Anderson, welcome to the channel. I don't know, Half Daddy. He's the guy who tried the gator roll on Chris Carson when we played the Cowboys in 2020. It looked like his season was over and then he came back the next week, I think. It was weird. Do you think the Browns think they got Tyreek Hill instead?
Yeah. Yeah, Half Daddy. Those people just over exaggerate things, man. Yeah, he actually got up on his own. Oh, wow. I've never seen him use the hammock. Wow. I put the hammock in there, but I didn't know he ever used it. But now he's just crawling into it. Oh, that's cool. I can't show it on camera. We're not, we wouldn't trade for Zeke. We would just sign him. I don't think we're going to sign him either, but it's not impossible. Ah, he just decided to crawl into his hammock for the first time in forever. Yeah, Al Woods has still got one year left on his deal. I just feel like he's too old. He's going to get hurt again, man. Okay. I need to clip his nails, though. I really do. I've waited too long. The hardest part about having a sugar glider, honestly, I would argue the only really hard part is trimming their nails. That's the hard part. How much cap space do we have left? I'd estimate somewhere around 14. I'd estimate somewhere around 14. You, We can create more pretty easily, but right now, I'd say something like that. Jamez, thank you for the four ninety nine. Carter is a three hundred pound freak of nature working out with OLBs on pro day. Still best at his position. If we don't get him, there will be huge regrets for sure. <clears throat> I can see that, Jamez. I could see that, absolutely. That's a possibility. I'm open to it. But you got to admit, there are a lot of issues there. There are a lot of problems. Like, there are real concerns here. Yeah! Orpheus, welcome to the channel. And he did not look like a freak of nature yesterday, just saying. Yeah, definitely, Eugenio. At this point, to me, taking Carter at five is like taking Anthony Richardson at five. I'm not going to dislike it, but I'm going to be very afraid. I'm going to be scared. Like, it's, it's not like taking Will Anderson or C.J. Stroud where I know that the value is appropriate.
Levis at five, I would be okay with if we didn't have a quarterback. But with Geno signed, it doesn't make sense. So at this point, I would say, yeah. Um, Generally speaking, I think he's worth it. But not in this specific situation. Right, guys, we've been streaming for four hours now, so we're basically about halfway through the day. Things are super slow right now. We did get a pretty good move just now, but we still need more details on it. So, pretty great. Pretty great. You guys have been a great audience as well. Been a lot of fun. Um, how about I step away for a little while here? I'm going to try to will another Seahawks move into existence, or at least an announcement of the Evan Brown money. I think I'm going to step away for a little while here. Hopefully, this will prompt the move. So, I'll see you guys in... I don't know exactly when. But, uh, yeah, good news today. Good news today. See you guys in a little bit. Sunset found her squatting in the grass, groaning. Every stool was looser than the one before, and smelled fouler. By the time the moon came up, she was shitting brown water. The more she drank, the more she shat. But the more she shat, the thirstier she grew.
And we finally have a signing. And we finally have a signing, people. Good Lord. It was dead, man. I was actually, I, I was, I did sleep for a little bit, but I was up on my phone. Just waiting for something to happen for me to talk about. But, finally have some movement. What's up, people? Okay, so, Drew Locke, back. Didn't really see this coming. Didn't think there was any way he was going to want to come back once we got Gino back. I really, really went all out trying to make, trying to will a move into existence. And it finally happened, everyone. Okay, so it looks like we had some donations while I was gone. Let me catch up on everything. So hopefully the people who donated are actually still here. Wow, it was DevDog. DevDog did another $99 super chat. $99.99. Seahawks Brendan Nelson has the best chat out of any Seahawks channel that has ever or will ever exist. Go Hawks. Well, thank you, DevDog. Right. I don't think anybody on my tier list got signed while I was gone, which is crazy. I'm looking. I don't think anybody got picked up. I got like 50 people. I got like 50 people. <laughs> hey, Kyle, what's up? Yeah, check it out. I'm Rayman. Anyway, I did not mean to be gone that long, but in my defense, nothing was happening. And I didn't want to come here and just sit here and stare at the screen and then have people ask me questions about like, you know, what uh, what uh, what city do you live in? You know, stuff like that. So, <laughs> I hope you guys can understand. I thought about coming back around three, but I decided it just wait until something actually happened okay everyone behave for a second here okay yeah somebody asked me that yesterday 
Okay. Okay. What's up, everybody? Good afternoon. And once again, the Seahawks are making moves around 4 p.m. That seems to be their thing. I don't know if it's just a coincidence. I don't know if it's actually like some kind of pattern, but they seem to be liking the moves that you can make around 4 p.m. Just something to keep in mind going forward. But anyway, the Seahawks have made another move and it's one that I did not see coming at all. I thought this one was dead in the water, but we are bringing back Drew Locke. Yeah, that's right, Drew Locke, and I am shocked. I am so shocked. In fact, my body has completely disappeared. It has run off. It'll be back later, but um, for the moment, it is gone because I am so surprised that we brought back Drew Locke. So, one year, $4 million. That gives us our second quarterback, meaning you can pretty much forget about drafting any kind of quarterback in the uh, um, in in the draft. You can forget about us signing a quarterback outside free agency. And how do I feel about this? Well, Drew Locke is better than any backup I thought we had a chance to get at this point. I thought the only quarterbacks we were going to be able to get would be the pure backups, the guys who have and understanding that they're very unlikely to ever be able to start. So getting somebody like Drew Locke back, who I thought was going to go somewhere, he thought he was going to get a chance to start. Like before free agency, I thought he was going to go to like Tampa or maybe Las Vegas. And as the free agency period went on, it seemed less and less likely he was going to be able to find that spot. But I did not think he was going to come back to Seattle to sit behind... Uh, Geno Smith again. I thought he was going to go somewhere where he had a better chance of actually starting. Here in Seattle, he is firmly rooted behind Geno. So that's kind of interesting. That's uh, kind of surprising. Um, I know some people are going to be disappointed because it completely takes quarterback off the board in the draft pretty much. Um, we're only going to ha carry two quarterbacks 99% of the time. Most teams only carry two quarterbacks on the active roster. So basically, if you had any ambitions of acquiring one of the four quarterbacks in the first round, you can forget about it. If you had any ambitions of Hendon Hooker in the third, I think you can flush that as well. Some people are going to be disappointed by it. I get it. But at the same time, we have gotten Drew Lock back for $4 million. Possibly, possibly it can go up to 7.5, but that would actually require him to play. But I don't think he's going to be playing unless there's a disaster, so the odds of him earning that money go way down. The only way he earns that money would be if Geno Smith doesn't earn any of his money, so it's going to be more than offset if he does. So the cap-wise, I think it's pretty great. You, you get $4 million for a veteran backup quarterback who has been with the team now for, this is going to be a second year, somebody we're grooming, somebody who has the opportunity to um, prove that he one day could be a starter for this team. That's at least possible. But I know that some people are going to be somewhat disappointed that we didn't attack the quarterback position through the draft. I get it. Personally, I'm cool with it. I'm pretty cool with it. Um, we can worry about quarterback next year. We can worry about quarterback in the 2024 draft. Uh, Locke still has some potential. Locke can still be pretty good. So... There you go. Drew Locke is back. Four million bucks. It's a one-year deal, so it should pretty much count fully against the cap. Labrador Hawk, thank you for the $20. I'll address your comment in one moment here. But uh, yeah, I thought Drew Locke was gone, gone, gone the moment we extended Geno. And it seemed like the market wasn't there for him. And we got him back at what I would consider to be a reduced cost. It may be a little bit, just a little bit. Like, I thought he was going to get at least five million, maybe up to seven. And the only way he does that now is if he actually plays, which is somewhat unlikely here. All right, so backup quarterback is now addressed, and we can kind of forget about the position for now. So let me know what you guys think down below. Um, I'm going to continue to cover free agency for another half hour or so. I left the stream for over three hours to try to will something into existence, and finally something happened. So that was cool. So um, thank you. For participating in stream, everybody, we finally willed something into existence, and uh, yep, Drew Locke is back as a Seahawk in 2024.
23. All right, Labrador Hawk, how probable do you think it is Bobby Wagner resigns? I think it's like 70%. I don't know who else would pick him up at this point. I will say, though, he might be asking for more than we're willing to give. Poop dog, that's not going to happen. Well, say though, that's $4 million less we have to spend, which is significant, right? It, it, it is like, like John said in his uh, interview just now, talking about the linebacker position, it, it is really starting, the money that we have is really starting to like disappear. Derek, because I'm going to be back eventually. Like, here's the thing you got to understand. Not only were the Seahawks not doing anything, nothing was happening across the entire NFL. Why would I come back? But if I leave the stream open, people can just hang out there and wait for me to come back. I don't think it's a big deal. I didn't mean to be gone that long, but nothing was happening. I hate how all the images on Google search are WebP. WebP are the... I can't use them. Like, I just want a damn JPEG. Ford Skyler, thank you for the $1.99. Miles Jack or Bobby? I, I would say Bobby. Miles Jack. I don't know about Miles Jack, man. He's uh, been a pretty inconsistent player over his career. Um, But we need multiple linebackers anyway. So hopefully we can do, like, more than just one. Yeah, guys, there's, like, the only way we draft a quarterback would be, like, at the very end of the draft, somebody we think we could sneak on the practice squad. And I'm guessing there are too many guarantees in the contract to realistically um, um, cut him before the season starts. Like, it's $4 million. A chunk of that money is probably going to be guaranteed. That would be bad business. You could do, <clears throat> do it, but it's definitely not something you want to be doing. Supposedly, Hendon Hooker is going to be ready to go for the start of the season, though. I don't think you can do that. Derpy Squid, thank you for the $2. Is that a Sounder shirt? Yes. Y-E-S. Donta Foreman? Ooh, there's a big one, finally. Okay. Donta Foreman is off the board. That is a tragedy. We must really like the running backs in the draft. That's all I can say. Oh, Bears also got Robert Tanya, and I missed that one second here.
We still don't have the contract details even on Jay Reed or Evan Brown. Man, was a dead period. Oh, wow, DeMar Hamlin expects to play in the NFL again. Hey, boy. Good luck with that. Yikes. Cody Ford got signed. He was somebody low on my list, but he was there, I think. Um, maybe he wasn't. Oh, okay, I left him off. All right. back. Anyway, thank you to everybody who hung around that whole time I was gone. <laughs> I know you guys didn't have to do that, but I hope you guys can understand why I didn't come back for a long time when there was literally nothing happening of any interest. Kyle, I mean, look, it's just a uh, lot of stuff going on. Yeah, he said we're going to get him as a center, so that's good. Wow, I just got the douchiest comment I've ever gotten in my life. Good lord. Okay, it was on the video where I broke, the, well, I didn't break the news, but I posted the, uh, about Evan Brown getting signed. Thanks for announcing the signing. I can honestly say I heard it here first. Now, have you ever watched him play a down? Have you reviewed any tape on him? What are the reasons for saying it's a good signing as opposed to him just being a football player who signed a contract? Can you share a statistic or anything about the guy? That's the next step in becoming a useful source of info. It's okay to be a reporter. I want to support Seattle content creators, but I won't subscribe unless you have some additional expertise to offer. Yeah, I know Slay got extended, but he was already an Eagle anyway, so it's not like anything really, like, changed. Like, it literally just happened, so I made a video briefly discussing it. I don't know. That's weird. 
That is the most passive aggressive douchey comment I think I've ever gotten. Yeah, I'd like DTR late, but can you sneak him on the practice squad? I don't know. Freak Island, thank you for the $1.99. You usually drop your in-depth videos the next day. Yeah, if I have anything more in-depth to say, I will definitely throw that out there by that point. Okay. And are we releasing Al Woods? Presumably whenever we're able to get another nose tackle. I guess we don't want to be caught with our pants down and just not have any nose tackles except for injured Brian Monet. How much we paid Evan Brown? God, I, I don't know, man. Four million? Four and a half million? Something like that. They're in talks with a number of defensive linemen. Linebackers in need, but there are a lot of free agents out there, which is something I agree with. I mean, Spotrack estimated he was going to get like 10 milli, so if we got him for anything less than that, it's pretty good. Oh, let's see here. Tariq, thank you for the... Or Tariq Island, thank you for the dollar ninety nine. That's a cool name. I got to say it full every time. We'll and Finna get a lot of money when time is due, yeah? And if he keeps this up, I hope he gets it here. He's one of the cornerbacks who is worth paying if he continues to play at this level. And Power Code, thank you for the $5. Yo, Brendan, here's a cool 5 bucks for the dedication and commitment. Appreciate you, bro. FA has been decent so far. Still need some closure at linebacker. Yeah, that sounds about right to me, man. We, we need... I mean, I don't need us to go crazy at linebacker because there are some guys in the draft I like, but you got to, like, reinforce things a little bit. Um, yeah, let me put the free agency wish list on screen again. Um, RSF. That, I mean, you can kind of pull... Um, um, McGovern off if if Evan Brown's going to be our starting center, but I'm leaving him on there for now because technically we do need another center. Zeke is not coming in for a visit tomorrow. That was a troll account, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to remove all quarterbacks from my tier list now, but I only had like three, so it's not that big of a deal. And none of them were anywhere close to the screen, so it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Red Ace, thank you for the four ninety nine free agency is going according to plan so far. Go Hawks. Um, I'm not unhappy with our free agency. I think it's going pretty well. I am very confused as to what we're going to do at linebacker, but there are still linebackers out there who I like. Yeah, I don't mind the free agency that we've had so far at all. K 
Okay, center now goes from high need to medium need, meaning we only have three positions left that are of a high need. When I say high need, I mean like we need a lot of stuff quickly. Yeah, at this point, I think we're probably committed to taking a defensive player or trading down at five. There's no way we're taking a quarterback. Miguel Cortez, thank you for the $5 tip. Hey, Brendan, hope you're doing good. How would Anderson and Simpson sound at 5 and 20? I think that sounds amazing. Anderson and Simpson at 5 and 20? Like, that would get me out of my seat. And I know a lot of people would say Simpson is a reach at 20. I don't think he is. Uh, do you think we will look to draft IOL in the mid rounds now after the Brown signing? I mean, I think I don't think anything changes that radically. We still need significant help at center and right guard, and we still need maybe a little bit of help at left guard. I don't think it changes anything that drastically. I think our needs basically are. Our big needs are like massive needs are, uh, lean. hold on, nose tackle, defensive end, and linebacker. I still say defensive end because I don't know if Jaron Reed, J Jaron Reed's good enough to start, and we also have guys like Hewitt and Adams as next men up, which is not great. Um, I have running back now as kind of a medium need. I think that's probably a pretty fair way to put it after we've lost some of the guys that we've lost. And, well, in Power Co., thank you for the $5. Avila or JMS? Would you rather have the guard center flexibility or the pure center talent? Um, I guess I would say Avila because there are other centers I'd rather have at this point than JMS, like Tipman and Whipler. I'm not a huge Avila guy, but... He would definitely slot in well as a guard depth that could become a starter in year two. El Costanza, thank you for the $5. I learned about a sugar glider today. That's cool. I'm just curious what part of Marvin Mims' game you value for the offense. Go Hawks. Uh, he's a pure slot receiver that you could get in the third round. Pure slot receiver you could get in the third round. I think that's pretty appealing. Uh, we need a slot receiver. He would be very cheap in the third round. And I he had an impressive combine. He, he was good at Oklahoma. I like his skill set. It, it fits the slot very well. Hey, the Reno. What's up? I think we're probably going to re-sign Bobby at this point. I think it's like 70%. I'm not seeing a whole lot of other teams being all that interested in him is the thing. Two nose, three nose tackles in FA I would like. Greg Gaines, Ashawn Robinson, and John Jenkins. Those would be my guys. Right now, I'm kind of thinking we take Carter, but we probably haven't even made the decision yet, so it's just, you know, saying names right now. Free agency never really ends, guys. Free agency never really ends, but the first week is the big wave, where by the end of the first week, a lot of the top-tier players are gone. 
like right now, like I still have Connor McGovern on my list, but straight up, I, I don't know how much we want him after the Evan Brown signing. It depends on how we view Evan Brown. Yes, Ethan. Okay. Um, let's see here. Did John Schneider say anything about running back? Did um, John Schneider say anything about running back in his interview thingy? I know we talked about linebacker and defensive linemen. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the day four free agency recap video. We have come to a conclusion on the main action of the day. It was another moderately slow day, honestly. I think Jessica Butler, thank you for the $2. Love the stream. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for being here and supporting as well. Okay. Let me just start the video over then. Okay. Thank you, Jessica Butler. I appreciate that. Thank you for the $2. Here. Let me start reshooting it here. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the recap video for day four of NFL Free Agency. Uh, it was the first full day of actual, factual free agency. And once again, things went maybe a little bit slower than we thought. But by the end of the day, the Seahawks had made a couple of moves. They had also, per thanks to John Schneider's uh, radio interview, come out and said some things about what they're planning to do from here on out. So... What did we learn today about the Seattle Seahawks? What did they do? Did they make anything better? Yeah, they did. Uh, we actually have a center on the roster, a real center, an actual factual center. And it's one that I wasn't really talking about that much personally. It wasn't somebody who was on my radar in a big way, but it seems like we have done extremely well and we have gotten our hands on an extremely undervalued one get based on the fact that we gave him a one year deal. So, um, Evan Brown was the first move of the day, guard slash center from uh, Detroit, the Detroit Lions. He played center in 2021 and in 2022 he played right guard. He was better at center though. Schneider has confirmed that he's going to be a center here. We view him as one, but he has some versatility, which is nice. He played a nice season in 2021 for the Lions at center. Uh, at guard, he occasionally got physically overwhelmed, which was something that um, which was uh, something that hopefully he won't have to deal with here. I think it's a really nice signing. It's a one-year deal, so it might just be a bridge or a hedge for a rookie center. Basically, we don't have to take a rookie center now, but if we do, it's pretty easy for Evan Brown to either just start for a year ahead of the rookie or maybe compete with the rookie for a starting job. So... That is great news. We have ourselves a center, and it's somebody who is starting caliber. He started the last couple years. He started 24 games at center and right guard across two seasons for the uh, Detroit Lions. So Evan Brown is here, and I think that most Seahawks fans are pretty on board with it. We don't know the money yet, though. We know it's a one-year deal. We know it's a one-year deal, which... Given the fact that Spotrack estimated this guy was going to get like three years, ten, uh, uh, 30 million, 32 million actually, I think, that means we did quite well here. And I think that it, it allows us to be flexible in the draft. And that's the main benefit here. So good signing. I like it. I got to do more research into it. I got to look into it a little bit more. But it seems good to me. All right, so that takes us to move number two, which just happened like a couple hours ago. Drew Locke. 
Drew Locke is back in Seattle. This one surprised me. I thought he was gone for sure after we brought Geno back. I thought we were going to bring back either one or the other, not both. But the market never really developed for Drew Locke, and he's back for a contract that is probably going to end up being one year, $4 million. So that's kind of an interesting move, just trying to, you know, understand what's going on here. Obviously, Geno Smith's contract means he's probably going to be here for a, another two years. So drafting a quarterback, especially with a high-value pick, is unlikely to be on the menu, even though I think it was still a possibility before today. Now that it's now it's really not. So bringing back Drew Locke just as a backup who can take over if Geno gets hurt or is really not playing well, that makes some more sense. But I still thought he was going to go somewhere where he had a chance to actually just straight up start, like Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa Bay signed Mayfield. Uh, the Va Raiders signed uh, Garoppolo. So it became harder and harder for him to find that place. But I thought for sure he was going to go somewhere where he could at least compete for the starting job. But maybe that pay place just really did not manifest. So Drew Locke is back in Seattle on what is likely to be a one-year $4 million deal. I think that's a good deal for him. You look at what other backup quarterbacks are going for, other experienced veteran backup quarterbacks are going for, guys like uh, um, uh, Sam Darnold, guys like Andy Dalton, guys like, um, God, what's another good example? Baker Mayfield. I know he's going to start there, but we all know that um, Baker Mayfield is basically a backup quarterback. Um, it it kind of makes a lot of sense to me that you would go for one year, four million on Drew Locke. So pretty good activity today. Um, we helped fill out the roster. I think things are starting to make a lot more sense. There are basically three remaining positions of concern for the Seahawks at the moment in terms of like we kind of need to do something now. Um, they are running back, defensive line, and linebacker. Uh, running back, we currently have two running backs on the roster, and one of them is DJ Dallas, who people have mixed feelings on in general. Um, there is, um, of course, K-9. And then defensive line, I know we've added some guys on the defensive line, but I'm still looking at it. There, we still have a depth problem right now. Our number th three and number four defensive ends are Miles Adams and Gerard Hewitt. So, I... I feel like we got to do a lot better there, and I feel like part of that is a free agent signing. And linebacker, we still haven't signed anybody. Right now, our linebackers are John Radigan and probably Nick Ballor. <laughs> so I think we still need help in these areas, and I don't think the draft is going to be able to do 100% of it. You want to maintain flexibility. So, John Schneider did actually do an interview on the radio earlier today, not too long ago, actually, as of this recording, just a couple hours ago, and he did talk about the fact that there are a lot of linebackers available in free agency, so he did not feel the need to sign um, anybody who was in a bidding war, because that drives the price up, of course. He wanted to wait and see who was left after everyone had exhausted all of their money. So that makes sense to me. I, I, I don't have any issue with that. I have no objection with the idea of hanging back and waiting for the right linebacker. So I like that. There are still plenty of linebackers in left in free agency that I think would be good. Um, we may need to sign more than one, but we can still do that. And kind of like with Evan Brown, if you wait, there are going to be guys out there who you can get for a much cheaper cost. Uh, he also said that the Seahawks are still looking at signing defensive linemen, and it has been said, this was actually said yesterday, that the Seahawks were very close to getting Zach Allen and Draymond Jones. They just couldn't make the financials work with uh, Zach Allen. So clearly there is an understanding that we need to get much better on the defensive line, and we're going to have to do at least some of that through free agency. So I expect us to be in on one of these nose tackles who's left, maybe a guy like Akeem Hicks, but at this point, it seems like we're kind of waiting for the cost to go down, which is completely reasonable. I get it. I got no objection with that. Um, there were some things that hurt a little bit today. Like, it hurt to see Donta Foreman go to the Bears for $3 million. I would have loved to have gotten Donta Foreman for $3 million. Andrew Billings went to the Bears for $3.5 million. I would have been all over that. He's a starting caliber, decent nose tackle. Yes, these things do punch you a little bit, but overall there are still a ton of players left in free agency who I would love to get. So that's basically what happened in day four of free agency for the Seahawks. We didn't lose anybody. 
<clears throat> actually, none of our outgoing free agents have signed today. Um, Drew Locke, one year, four million, and Evan Brown, guard slash center, has signed for one year, unknown amount. I'd call that a pretty good day. We are starting to run low on money. I talked about the uh, salary cap situation this morning, but there are still things we can do to create more. We have not restructured Lockett yet. We have not done any void year voodoo yet, to our knowledge. Um, it's still very possible. All right. I'll see you guys later tonight. I'll see you guys on Twitch. I will be streaming tonight. Probably it takes two. I'll see you guys for the uh, B&B show over on the Hawk's Nest. So thank you for coming out today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this video uploaded, and that's your day four recap. Pretty good stuff. Need to see more. We got one day left of the uh, marathon streams. Okay. So let me get this uploaded here real quick. But I'm going to go ahead and cut out of here. I'm going to, just a couple minutes early, I'm trying to make sure that um, I'm able to be here for the Hawk's Nest show. So... That is basically everything that's happened today. I don't think we're going to do anything else. That's two moves. That's pretty significant, given the fact we don't have a ton of cap space left. And Schneider basically already said that we are kind of holding out for the cheaper guys. So, great day, guys. Um, even though I left for, like, over three hours of the eight-hour stream, I think everybody will forgive me for that because, you know, nothing was happening. I hope people understand that. But uh, we picked up some members. Donations were great. You guys are being very supportive. This is awesome. And yeah, no complaints whatsoever. So I'll see everybody later for the B&B &B show. Go Hawks. And yep, the crazy week.